DCS cases. What exactly is that? When you go on ccscases.com, you purchase it. I think you could do a three month subscription or even more than that if you need to. On the screen, it'll, there'll be a box and it'll say something like, a 60 year old man comes severe chest pain and they describe it a little bit like, is it stabbing or is it dull? And radiating to the left arm started this morning. And then you click and then it'll show more about his medical history. Like he has GERD, these are the medications that he's taking. It might give you some of the vitals also. Like, does he have a fever? What his heart rate is like a little bit of family history social history does he smoke etc and you have to skim through that quickly this whole thing is timed by the way it's actually not as hard as it sounds once you get used to it, it takes about less than 20 seconds to just skim through all of that we got to the point where it took less than 10 seconds to just look 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 and you can go back to that information later on during that timed case first of all you decide do you want to keep him in the emergency department is the patient in the type of condition where you can move him to the inpatient setting or do you want him to follow up in clinic and you get to click on when he should follow up in clinic with you? It's actually not as difficult as it sounds. Usually people do. After two weeks of this visit, see you in clinic. And then you do the physical exam part. So you click on what you want to do with him and when they're present in the ed there are particular things that you do you basically get the whole physical exam including genitals all of that sometimes it's inappropriate to do everything to check all the body systems you target the ones that are most important in that scenario once you click on kink abdomen respiratory gi genitals whatever and click enter it'll show you all the results for the physical exam for that patient so it may say heat pearl eomi etc all that looks good but at the heart part it says that patient is tachycardic or something like that and then you decide also from the physical exam what the patient needs for example if you see patient is dyspneic they're having a hard time breathing you see pallor as well then you know the patient needs oxygen so after that you're able to type in the orders. So what are the most important orders that you need to put in for this particular case? Usually for most of the case, there are some common orders that you need to enter for pretty much everyone, like pulse, ox, G, whenever they come into the emergency department, EKG. For example, if the patient had come in with a broken arm, you want to get an x-ray of that arm. They hit their head, do you suspect that there could be bleeding? Even if you don't, it's better to be safe than sorry, so CT of the head. And you can also order IV access. That's a good one. One, IV access, IV fluids if the patient needs it. I just want to take a moment to note that the order in which you place your orders is important. So for example, if there's a patient who has trouble breathing, you're not going to order oxygen last. You're going to do that first. And if you order it later on than you should, you're going to lose points on that case. And don't worry because once you keep practicing those CCS cases, you'll start to understand when it's appropriate to order certain things. So just keep doing those CCS cases and you'll start to see the pattern. And at first I asked myself before I started this, am I going to know exactly what to order? Dextrose 5%, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, for the most part, you don't really need to know that much. <laughs> so it's okay if you didn't start residency. Even if you didn't, you can still pass the step three exam. I'll go into more detail about that a little bit later. That's basically what CCS cases is like. And there are hundreds of cases and they also show you which ones are more high yield. So do the most high yield ones first, but don't ignore the ones that are not high yield and are kind of at the bottom of the screen screen when you sort based on how high yield the topics are. The topics on CCS cases could be neurology, you know, someone hit their head or something. They're not going to give you details until you actually click the case open. Cardiology, pulmonology, pediatrics, and OBGYN and all that other stuff and topics on that. Don't ignore the least high yield stuff because you can see that on the exam as well. Memorize the cases. If you can't memorize the cases, there are a lot of cases. I don't I didn't memorize all the cases. It's it's a lot to memorize, especially when you're on a time crunch, but get very familiar with it. So if you see this six-year-old pediatric patient coming in with this type of crusting lesion, think to yourself, oh, I remember doing something like that on CCS cases. It could be XYZ diagnosis and I might have to order XYZ things and this could be the treatment and this is the follow-up stuff that I need to order. So it will ring a bell in your head if you do it enough times. And to be honest, it's kind of fun. It's so much more interactive than just sitting there doing you world questions and write down what you get wrong. The orders that you forgot to get like, oh, I forgot CBC. Duh, I should have done that. Or, oh, I forgot to get a pap 
smear on this type of patient in this case. Write it down, remember it so that for the next time you know exactly what to order and you remember not to miss things that you missed before. At this point you're pretty much used to the whole you world stuff like trying to get through that. So just make a proper schedule for yourself and finish the you world questions at least like one and a half passes, two passes if you want. Sometimes I feel like a lot of the board exams they'll throw some wonky questions at you or they'll word it in a very odd way. Sometimes I read it and I say to myself you know if you just worded it differently or in a more straightforward way, I think more people would get this question correct. Don't psych yourself out if you're in the step three exam and you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, like what is this? I think it's meant to be that way because if they were more straightforward, maybe more people would get the answer correct. But once you get over those two days, just relax. Even if you feel like you didn't do so well or even if you feel like you did great, uh, just just take your time off because those two days can be quite draining. <laughs> Something that's also really important to note is that cases on the step three exam count for approximately 25% or more of your overall score. So don't slack on doing CCS cases. Do all of them if you can. I know everybody's in a different position, but if you can ideally do all of the cases, do all of it twice, even thrice, and try to recall the cases and what you ordered for each and every one of them. And you're gonna get to a point where it's gonna be so automatic and you're just typing really quickly because you know all the orders that you have to type in or at least most of the common ones and that's gonna help you save time. And if you're the type who wants to really finish that exam ASAP on the second day, you can do that too. Some people left pretty darn early during the second day because they finished their cases so quickly. So I hope this video gave you all a general idea of what the cases are like for the step three exam. Please be sure to check out my other video on how to tackle the cases and what the common orders are. Happy studying! And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos for more content.